This is the first video lecture for section 2.3 on the Condorcet method. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about pairwise elections. So we've already talked about the situation when we have two candidates in an election, and the situation is pretty easy. As we've discussed, when there's only two candidates, deciding the winner means that we should use majority rule. May's theorem says that majority rule is the only system for two candidates that satisfies all of our fairness criteria. The situation with three or more candidates, however, is a lot harder. So in the US, typically the system we use is called plurality voting. And in plurality voting, everybody votes for their top choice candidate, and the candidate who receives more votes than any other candidate is declared the winner. But we've seen that there are issues with that system. So some of the flaws are that the winner of a plurality election is often least preferred by a majority of the voters. Or in other words, more than half of the voters get stuck with the candidate who would have been their least preferred choice, their worst choice. And voters really can't express their true preference. So they might like a minor party candidate pretty well. They might even like that minor party candidate the best, but they feel like they can't vote for that minor party candidate because they'd be wasting their vote or throwing their vote away. That's something that we talk about a lot here in the US when you think about third party candidates. So we're looking for a better way. We'd like to find a voting method that fixes some of these problems. And this is a discussion that comes up a lot whenever we have a controversial election. People say, well, let's change this. Let's change the system. Let's find a better way to find the winner of an election that fixes some of these problems. And these discussions are not new or something that's just a product of our modern era. Back in the 18th century, a philosopher and mathematician named the Marquis de Condorcet was well aware of the flaws in the plurality system that they were using at the time. So Condorcet suggested a method that was based on the fact that majority rule is this perfect, great system to, for two candidates. We want to try to adapt that to the situation where we have more than two candidates. So the way that this is going to work is that every voter is going to fill out a ballot that lists their entire preference list. So the first choice candidate, second choice candidate, third choice candidate, and so on. So the way we're going to write this, we talked about this in a previous lecture, is we're going to write the candidates in that order separated by greater than signs. So when we write D greater than A greater than C greater than B, what this means is that D is this voter's first choice, A is this voter's second choice, C is this voter's third choice, and B is this voter's fourth choice. So in a plurality election, if that was this voter's preference, all they would be able to do in a plurality election is cast a single vote for D. They would not be able to express their relative preferences for candidates A, B, and C. So Marquis de Condorcet says, let's look at pairwise elections. So once everybody has submitted their ballots, we're going to look at all of the matchups of two candidates against one another. So if we had three candidates, there would be three matchups. Let's call them A, B, and C. We would have A versus B, A versus C, and B versus C. So we'd have those three matchups, and we'd want to try to figure out the winner of each of those. If we have four candidates, there are six matchups, A versus B, A versus C, and so on. You, see, you can see them listed here. If there are five candidates, there's more, right? So the more candidates you have, the more of these one-on-one -on -one matchups you have to figure out the winners for. And here's what we would do to find the winner of a pairwise election. So we would use the preference ballots. So again, let's go back to our voter who had the preference D, A, C, B. So who does this ballot go for in the A versus B election? So what this voter says is, okay, it's A versus B. I would love to vote for D in this election. D is my top choice but I can't because it's an A versus B election. So we sort of mentally cross out D and we say, okay, well, A is my second choice. If my choices are A versus B, well then A is pretty good. I like A better than B. So this voter's ballot, so this ballot right here would count for A. And so that's how we would figure out. So we would do that for every ballot and figure out which candidate does that ballot go for in that pairwise election. So here's the Condorcet method. So we use those voter preference lists, we find the winner of every pairwise election, A versus B, A versus C, and so on. And the candidate that beats all of their opponents in the pairwise elections, we call that the Condorcet winner. So that's the candidate who beats everybody one-on-one. -on -one. And the candidate that loses all of their pairwise elections, the candidate get, that gets beat in every one-on-one -on -one election, we call that candidate the Condorcet loser. So let's see an example. So here we have a voter profile. So again, remember how we read this. So we have six voters who have the preference milk top choice, soda second choice, juice third choice. We have five voters who all have the preference soda first choice, 
juice, second choice, milk, third choice. So we're grouping together voters that all have the same preference just to make it easier, right? Rather than having to count 15, there's 15 here, if I add up those numbers, 15 separate ballots, I'm grouping together the ones that are the same. So you could imagine if you were going through paper ballots, you would make little piles where all of the voters that had listed their candidates in the same order, you group those all together to make the counting easier. So now let's find the winner of these pairwise elections. Let's start with just one and then we'll do all of them on the next slide. So who would win milk versus soda? Okay, so what I'm looking at is I'm kind of mentally, I'm only looking at milk versus soda, so I'm kind of mentally blocking out juice right now, right? So juice is kind of not there right now. I'm just looking at milk versus soda and I'm just gonna make a tally. So how many votes does milk get? How many votes does soda get? So the six voters here, they like milk as their top choice. They say, we want to vote for milk. And so they get to. It's milk versus soda, so they vote for milk. These five voters here, their top choice is soda. So they say, we want to vote for soda. They get to. Those five votes go for soda. These four voters, they really want to vote for juice. Juice is their top choice. But they don't get to vote for juice right now. Right now, we're looking at milk versus soda. So instead, they vote for their second choice, which is soda. So those four votes vote, go for soda. And then we just add up these numbers. So milk got a total of six votes. Soda got a total of nine votes, five plus four. And so soda is the winner of the milk versus soda election. So then we just keep doing this. Okay, so now we're looking at, for all of the pairwise matchups, we did milk versus soda, soda was the winner. Now let's do milk versus juice. Okay, so if we look at our voters, these six voters, they're gonna vote for milk. These four voters down here, they're gonna vote for juice. What do these five voters in the middle do? Well, they can't vote for soda right now, so instead they vote for juice. So these five votes go for juice, and the total is, again, nine to six, and this time juice wins that one-on-one -on -one matchup. And then we do the same thing for soda versus juice. So we go back to the top of our chart. We look at these six voters. They would love to vote for milk, but they can't because it's soda versus juice right now. So instead they vote for soda. So these six voters go for soda. We look at these five voters. Their top choice is soda, so they're gonna vote for soda. So five go votes goes there. These four voters, their top choice is juice, so they go for juice. So soda wins this election 11 to four. So soda is the winner. Okay, so now we're looking at which candidate won all of their matchups. And soda won all of their matchups. Soda beat milk in this first election, and soda beat juice in this third election. Now you might say, well, soda didn't win the middle election. Well, soda wasn't in the middle election, right? That was a milk versus juice election. Soda didn't have a chance to win that pairwise matchup because soda wasn't part of that pairwise matchup. So the Condorcet method isn't saying which candidate won all of the matchups. It's saying which candidate won all of the matchups that they were in. In this case, that's soda. So soda is the Condorcet winner. What about the Condorcet loser? Which candidate lost all of their one-on-one -on -one matchups? Well, milk lost versus soda and milk lost versus juice. Those were all the matchups that had milk in them. So unfortunately, sad for milk, but milk is the Condorcet loser. And juice is neither one. Juice was neither the Condorcet winner nor the Condorcet loser because juice won one of its matchups, but lost the other one. So we're going to talk more about Condorcet's method in the next lecture. We're also going to talk about how we can use the Condorcet method as a fairness test to judge the fairness of other methods. So I'll see you next time.